Our next presentation will come from Farmiva and Deputy CEO Caroline Akkerjordet. Welcome, Caroline. Thank you. Hello, my name is Caroline. I'm the Deputy CEO at Farmiva. I joined Farmiva one year ago. Then I was Chief of Operation, and it was a really important period for Famida. We were not only preparing to do an IPO, but we were also preparing to put our first product on the market. One of my main drivers is to see great ideas coming to life. And that's exactly what we at Famida have succeeded on in the last year. But before I go into detail of what we've achieved our first year as a listed company and our future vision, I would like to take you back to the beginning. Famiva develops treatment for vaginal infections. When we started developing our technology, we first thought that we had finally been able to find a solution that is mimicking the vagina's own defense. But we, the more we worked with our solution, we actually saw that it was much deeper than that. We saw that we had found a solution that ended years and years of silent suffering for women all over the world. Bacterial vaginosis is the most common vaginal infection for fertile women. And the problem for women having bacterial vaginosis is not only the physical part, it's emotionally, and it's psychologically. A very strong symptom of this disease is that you have a very strong fishy odor. And a lot of the women feel this is really embarrassing and they avoid contact with friends, coworkers and partners. Then imagine that the only solution you have is to book an appointment with your local doctor because the only available product as uh, treatment is prescription medicine antibiotics, but not today. Today, women can Google their own systems, uh, symptoms. They can be educated about their vaginal health on our website. They can order, order their treatment online and receive it the next day without even leaving their house. The fact that antibiotics is the first line of treatment for the most, va uh, most common vagin vaginal infection in fertile women only emphasizes the unmet need and the reason why we need to keep investing in this area. 1.27 million deaths in 2019 were directly caused by antimicrobial resistance. This was published recently in an article in The Lancet. Now let's look at some company highlights. As I mentioned, Farmiva is a femtech company. We're focusing on vaginal health. We were founded in 2015 and we're located in the heart of Lund in Sweden. Our product is based on a vaginal mousse technology called Venerol with strong IP rights. Our first product, Venevia, was launched in Sweden five months ago. It's a treatment for bacterial vaginosis it's an approved medical device, class 2A, and we have clinical evidence for superior symptom relief and cure rate in line with antibiotics. We had a successful launch in Sweden last year, and we are now available on the largest pharmacies in Sweden, both online and in store. Looking at the global market for bacterial vaginosis, the market value is set to 900 million euros. And that is for bacterial vaginosis. But the interesting part about our technology is looking into our pipeline. Let's dig deeper into that. Looking into our portfolio, where we are today is our first product, Venivia, a treatment for bacterial vaginosis. Venivia is the first step in building a global multi-product vaginal health business. And it's part of Farmiva's self-care vision. And as you can see, the next products in line are for candida and sexual transmitted infections. But the really interesting part is that our technology, Venerol, is a really great platform for a drug delivery, where you could look at adding active ingredients as a pharmaceutical drug. So how does this pipeline affect growing our market value? Well, we already talked about that the value for bacterial vaginosis at a global level is 900 million euros. 
Well, adding to that candida, as you could see in our pipeline, you could add 850 million euros. And again, if you're adding sexual transmitted disease, you can add more than 4 billion euros. When I first started Femiva, I thought it was very interesting how underinvested femtech is. And I was starting looking into why is it, why, why is it like that? And a lot of the articles and the analysis I read was that femcare or vaginal health area um, is hard to describe. So what is really important to understand the potential of a product or a technology is also to understand the problem. So let's dig a bit deeper into that. Bacterial vaginosis, what is that? It's an infection caused by an imbalance of bacteria in the vagina. In a healthy vagina, you have bacteria, good bacteria, lactobacillus. These lactobacillus, they create a small amount of hydrogen peroxide, which creates a low pH, which is not very friendly for pathogenic bacteria. At some point, your vagina's own defense can be weakened and you have an introduction of pathogenic bacteria, and this can lead to an imbalance and you have bacterial vaginosis. The symptoms, as I also described before, is uh, an increased pH, and the increased pH will give this fishy, distinguished odor smell, which is affecting women at so many different levels. Our product, Vanivia, it mimics the vagina's own defense. We have stabilized hydrogen peroxide, monoglycerides, and lactic acid in a mousse that is a seven day treatment and we can show rapid symptom relief already after 12 hours. It's an effective treatment and it strengthens the vagina's own defense and it has no adverse side effects. So do we have any proof of our claims? Yes, we have done a proof of concept study, both on one dose and three dose, which has been the base for our now seven dose treatment. It has shown superior symptom relief, treatment effect in line with antibiotics. And this, as I said, is the base for our Venivia 7-dose treatment. This was important for uh, getting our, our product approved. But before we launched the product last year, we also did a user study here in Sweden. It was really positive. And, and one of the distinguished part we saw was that already after 12 hours, the women reported significant symptom relief of the smell. As I mentioned, it's a very heavy burden on women. 83% of the patient would recommend Venivia to friends. And again, no reported side effects. Looking at the competitors, you could divide them into two groups. You have the OTC product, which is symptom relief, only symptom relief. And then you have the prescription products, the antibiotics and antiseptic. The symptom relief products affecting the pH can remove the smell, but they're not treating the, the infection. The treatment antibiotic and septis, they are treating the infecting, but the problem is with antibiotics that they do not only affect the pathogenic bacteria, they are affecting the good protective lactobacillus, and which makes the vagina very susceptible to getting candida or a reinfection of bacterial vaginosis. And the fact that our product now is an OTC product, the patient don't need any prescription to get it, which also makes it a very good product for the midwives um, to be able to recommend this product for self-care. We also want to make our evidence even stronger for the healthcare professionals. And that is our PIVA study, which we are on full speed on now here in Sweden. And we are looking into the next month uh, of including patients. So now let's talk about a launch strategy here in Sweden. As you know, we launched five months ago, six months ahead of schedule. A big part of the strategy was positioning, communication and brand building. We really want to collect customer insight and product learnings. A big important part for us is to understand the consumer love and to build the proof of concept for our global rollout. The second part of our strategy is being to heavily target healthcare professional and key opinion leaders. And there's a funny thing about that because we were expecting a big push 
for these categories. And we've had a plan to be out and, dis uh, and have a uh, dialogue with clinics about this. But instead, we are actually experiencing uh, a pull from them. So they are calling us now and asking, can you please come and demonstrate your product, which they've heard about from their patients and in marketing campaign. And we are really happy about that. And we will continue uh, the dialogue with the healthcare professions uh, going for further. As you can see in this slide, we had an interview with Helena Kopkalner and, uh, and Emma Calling with Cell. Uh, and they have given us uh, really great recommendations. Now let's talk about sales. So we launched in October, the first quarter we signed with the three biggest pharmacies in Sweden. That was for online sales. The second quarter, this quarter we are in now, we have also launched physically in stores all over Sweden. We had a successful social media marketing campaign, which actually had more than 10 million views. Testimonials from both customers and professions shows a very positive reception for this new and innovation, innovating treatment. So let's wrap it up. Summary. What have we done since IPO April? We have planned and conducted a user study here in Sweden on a seven dose with really positive results. We've also launched our product six months ahead of plan. We've built a very strong platform and a very strong digital strategy. We can show sales traction, which is growing. We have a strong customer feedback and exceptional support and endorsement by the professions. We have relocated our study PIVA to Sweden, our home market, and we are accelerating patient recruitment and continuing to build medical community support in our important home market. We are also having scientific advisory board with strong medical advisors. And we also have initiated product development partnerships. And we have strengthened the organization to fit where we are today. To be, to be successful in a global rollout, what's really important for us right now is to learn from our current market, our home market in Sweden. We are uh, collecting information from customers and, and building brand. But what we're also doing parallel to that is analyzing those market we are wanting to go to. And as we have communicated before, this will be stepwise. We are looking into Europe for partnering and distribution partnerships. But we are also parallel to that, looking for the global market uh, and are already in dialogues with potential partners. So the Formiva, the long-term value creation, I'm coming back again a bit now to our pipeline, where we are today. The BV market is estimated to have a value in 2027 of 1.5 billion euros. That's where we are today. That's the product we have on the market. Looking at our line extension, as I mentioned, candida, sexual transmitted diseases, and also Venerol, our uh, delivery system for active ingredients. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline, for that presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could elaborate a little bit on what you mentioned here, how you define global expansion and what the plan looks like for that. Yes, um, as we commu communicated also last year, um, the plan for the global rollout is stepwise. The first part now is really to understanding the current market in Sweden and to collect the learnings to see how we can be successful in the next market. But no market is the same. So it's also important for us that collect data and understand the markets we are interested in. First of all, we're looking for Europe and the biggest markets, UK, Germany, France. And this will be partnerships, but also uh, potentially uh, distribution. Outside of Europe, we have the regulatory part, which also pay, uh, contributes. And there, it could be also an opportunity, because outside of Europe, we're not depending on unsee mark. So that could also be partnering, but it could also be a licensing. You did allude here to what the femtech industry and what the um, interest in it is like. How would you describe the investor 
interest in femtech at the moment? Mm. It's a really good question. It's something that I'm quite interested in myself. Um, and as when I started in this uh, industry, I thought it was really interesting why it was the, the interest wasn't higher. Uh, but what we can see now, even though it's less than five percent of the global capital that's invested in, uh, in female health, what we can see now, if, if you look at some of the biggest congresses that has been the last year, Femtech is often rated as one of the top trends and is actually uh, growing very much. In the US, it's growing much more, but Europe and the Scandinavian market is uh, catching along. So uh, I think it's a very interested market. And then finally, looking ahead at a change that's coming for, for yeah. me, but your current CEO is, is actually moving on to a position at Faring Pharmaceuticals. So yeah. I just wanted to know what, what is the company looking for in a new CEO? First of all, we are extremely grateful to be uh, allowed to have Christina with her uh, great knowledge in this area for so long and what she's contributed with this company the, the, the time she's been here. But also looking into where Famiva is going with the global rollout is also important that we are looking into a candidate that can take Famiva into the next step. And the board and uh, everyone else is on full speed and we have some really great candidates. So, um, so we're just actually looking forward to the next steps. Well, it seems like you have a very exciting year ahead of you then. Yes, most definitely. And thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about it. Thank, thank you. you.